Hello, Inside Jacob's Mind here. Today, counting down my top 10 least favorite, worst, whatever you want to call it, movies of the year. And I've watched a lot. I've watched over 100 this year. Uh, so I've got a lot to choose from. Uh, this video is going to be audio only because I'm having some problems with my camera. But, uh, you know, I hope you guys enjoy hearing me rant about movies I hated. Now, uh, I didn't, there's a couple that have yet to come out here that I didn't see, like Collateral Beauty and Assassin's Creed and stuff that are meant to be bad. So I haven't seen everything, but this is just the worst of what I saw. So I've got three honorable mentions to start with, well, dishonorable mentions, and those ones are Hail Caesar, uh, the Coen Brothers movie, it just really, really disappointed me. I'm a huge fan of their work, and I was really, really excited for this, but the plot just kind of meanders to nowhere, and it has some good elements, the cinematography's good, some of the performances are good, it just, it goes nowhere and it's a really, really dumb movie that I just couldn't find myself enjoying. Uh, Central Intelligence, The Rock, Kevin Hart, it was just bland and boring. The Rock was pretty annoying in this. One of Kevin Hart's better performances, but I really didn't enjoy this movie at all and I didn't laugh at all. Warcraft, Duncan Jones's video game movie. I was really, really excited for that because I'm a big fan of the director. And I was like, mm, maybe we can get a good video game movie. But no, uh, he kind of shut the bed. Uh, but really, it's not an easy material to adapt to the screen. But it was just a bad movie. The effects were cheesy. The acting was bad. The dialogue was bad. The third act was alright. But ultimately, Warcraft was a bit of a mess. Number 10 is Christopher Guest's Mascots. Uh, the straight-to-Netflix movie I finally got around to watching. And... Uh, I really didn't enjoy this one. I mean, it's got an alright cast. Zach Woods, uh, Sarah Baker, Parker Posey, um, Chris O'Dowd, who I thought was the standout of this movie. Jane Lynch is there, but it's about this mascot competition and all these sort of quirky people who are professional mascots. And it, it's in guests like documentary style format, but I just thought there wasn't really much to this one. It has its moments, but it didn't make me laugh at all. And I eventually just found myself hating it because it was just the plot goes nowhere. There were so many options opportunities to make this movie better and it ends up just you know being nothing it was very very bland very felt very straight to netflix even sort of it felt like a tv movie at times and it was really really disappointing uh number nine is creative control now i heard a lot of good things about this movie which is why i watched it earlier in the year but this creative control it should have been called hipster bullshit the movie because i i fucking hated this thing it's it's shot in black and white for i don't know no reason because you know it, it's a metaphor it's deep but it's sort of set in the future and it's this guy and he's created he's creating this uh, sort of social media technology where like it's these augmented reality glasses and you know they can create avatars and stuff and he designs an avatar of this girl he knows and like you know has sex with it and everything and it's just like it's just depressed whiny hipsters whining about their lives like oh, cheated on my girlfriend I have a fucking sad relationship and it's just like it this movie thinks it is so smart it's not. It is so fucking dumb and so boring and pretentious hipster bullshit creative control. <laughs> Number eight is a movie I was looking forward to. Uh, it's Jack Reacher Never Go Back. Um, I really, really like the first one. It's a really fun action movie. Tom Cruise is always fun. Uh, this one's directed by Edward Zwick, who I know did uh, Blood Diamond and some other stuff that I haven't seen. But he's a, he's a good director and... Uh, Jack Reacher Never Go Back failed miserably. It's an action movie with no fucking action. You get Tom Cruise in your movie and barely give him any action scenes. There's this whole subplot in the movie where there's this girl who may or may not be his daughter and he has to hang out with her and protect her and stuff. And she's this typical, you know, like, oh, I'm an edgy teenager, you don't understand me type character. And she just ruins the entire film. She's such a bad character. She's a liability. And the whole plot just gets bogged down. And, like, they try to make you emotional like every time the daughter's referenced the movie plays this sad music to try and get you to feel oh yes yeah, sad story but like no i don't give a shit it's a jack reacher movie i want action and uh the only good thing about this movie was kobe smolders as the female lead she was great she was a badass i want to see her in more stuff like this but overall this movie they they should have never gone back Number seven is Mr. Wright, penned by Max Landis, who's kind of becoming this big internet personality and, you know, made his mark with Chronicle. And now I was looking forward to Mr. Wright because Sam Rockwell is one of my favorite actors and the man can do no wrong. 
Unfortunately, though, he, he did a bit of wrong with this film. Uh, you got Anna Kendrick as well, and uh, Sam Rockwell's this assassin, and uh, the, t- the two fall in love, and they end up getting on the run and stuff. And it's a strange movie. It reminds me of American Ultra in a lot of ways, also written by Max Landis and that. Yeah, it's an action comedy, but like... The movie is really, really wacky and weird, and a lot of crazy shit happens, but they don't lean into it enough. They they try to have these sort of serious, dramatic moments too, and it just really, really falls flat. I thought Anna Kendrick was terrible in this. Uh, not really her fault, though, because it was such a poorly, poorly written character. Her character was so, so annoying, couldn't get behind her. Sam Rockwell was good. He tries. He's just making some really poor choices with his movies, and I feel bad for the guy, honestly, being in this. Like, Mr. Right, it's just a really really stupid movie and another another piece of evidence saying that Max Landers may be a one hit wonder Number six, this is sure to get the fanboys angry, Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice. Yes, I know, I know, I know. Uh, it's one of the first movies I saw this year, and I honestly, I, I hated it. I hated BVS. I mean, I wanted to like it. I really wanted to like it. I love these characters. I love DC Comics. I mean, I'll give Zack Snyder a chance. I think he's a bad director, but, you know, I liked Watchmen, so he had it in him, and I was excited for this, I was so excited, go to see it at a midnight screening, popcorn in hand, and it just disappointed so horrifically, this movie is the epitome of dull and boring, it is, so, oh my god, it's, there's, there's hardly anything redeemable about it, honestly, Ben Affleck was a great Batman, Music was good, um, but, like, Jeremy Irons was wasted as Alfred. Like, they cast this great guy and then have him barely be in it. And it, this movie's trying to do too much at once. It's trying to set up the Justice League movie, uh, and the editing of this movie is so poor that you can't tell what's going on. And this is the theatrical cut I'm talking about. I never watched the extended edition because I didn't want to put myself through this movie again. But the fight scenes are so incoherent and poorly edited, you can't tell what's going on. Batman's killing dudes. They kind of try to hide it, but he's killing dudes, and... And that wouldn't be a bad thing, but the movie doesn't address it. I mean, it would have been a cool character arc if they were like, hey, you know, Batman's, you know, he's old and he's he doesn't really give a shit anymore and he's killing people. But no, he just sort of does it and it just happens in the action scenes. Uh, it's really, really lazy Justice League setup. You know, they've got their logos and these clips that he finds in a LexCorp file. Like, did some LexCorp intern just decide to make all the superhero logos for the Flash and Aquaman and stuff? Like, it's just so dumb. Eisenberg was so hammy as Lex Luthor. He wasn't good. Uh, the ending was <laughs> was so bad. The dream sequences are pointless. Zack Snyder is basically Michael Bay 2.0. He's a glorified Michael Bay. He's a bad storyteller. There's some visual greatness in this movie, but ultimately, it was really, really terrible. I hated it. Number five. The heavy hitters are coming out. Uh, another freaking sequel. It's Zoolander 2. Uh, Zoolander 2 is, uh, directed by Ben Stiller, yeah, stars Ben Stiller as that iconic character, Derek Zoolander, the most ridiculously good-looking male model of all time, and, uh, this movie was just a cash grab. They, they, they waited too long to do it. It's just, you watch it, and it, it's just sad, really. Everybody looks old. <laughs> On Wilson and Ben Stiller being these models, they just look old, and it's just the cast is bad. Kristen Wiig was awful in this. She plays, like, this model fashion person, I don't know, but she was so awful, like, any time she comes on screen, I was so mad, and I like Kristen Wiig, but gosh, she was horrible in this, uh, you know, you get all your old people back, Will Ferrell, and, like, uh, what's her name, uh, Penelope Cruz is in it, and I feel like she was just in it, because Ben Stiller wanted to grab her tits, because that's a scene in the movie, and I feel like that's probably why Ben Stiller cast her, but no, Zoolander 2 is just a nothing movie made for money, and there's no reason at all to watch it. Number four, one of the dumbest and most unintentionally hilarious movies I've seen this year. It is The Girl on the Train. Now, I was very, very excited for this. I saw the trailers. They were dark, intriguing. It looked pretty cool. Um, Tate Taylor made The Help, I believe, which is meant to be a good movie. And Emily Blunt, she's one of the greatest actresses working right now. So, like, there was no reason this movie shouldn't have been good. It's based off a book that I've heard good things about. But, um, Girl on the Train, uh, Emily Blunt plays Rachel. She's this sort of alcoholic. She's a bit sort of losing her shit. And she, now she, like, takes the train and fantasizes about this family that she sees in this house. And, uh, she ends up getting herself involved in their life. A girl gets killed, uh... 
and things happen, and it's just, oh my god, this feels like a Lifetime movie. It's like a shitty Gone Girl ripoff. It's, I don't know how to describe this movie. It's so poorly done. It's so poorly written. I didn't even think Emily Blunt was good in it. She's winning a lot of praise for her performance. Like, she got nominated for Best Actress at the SAG Awards. I thought she was patchy. I mean, she was she was good in moments, but sometimes I think she was playing it too over the top. I couldn't, I wasn't interested in her character. I wasn't interested in the story. It was just rich white people problems, the movie. It was so boring. And uh, once it all comes together with the reveal, the reveal's kind of interesting, but it's, it's, it, by the time it gets to it, you don't really care anymore. And there's one moment at the end where a character gets killed and uh, there's just a certain weapon that's used. And I lost my shit laughing in the theater. It was so unintentionally funny. And the girl on the train, I, I hate this movie. I wish it didn't exist. Now, I said Girl on the Train was a dramatic movie that was unintentionally hilarious. Now, here's a comedy movie that is not funny at all, and that is number three. It is Ghostbusters, the Ghostbusters remake directed by Paul Fagg. Now, I don't want to get into all the political shitstorm of this, because all this shit aside, all the politics and gender stuff aside, I don't really have some connection to the original Ghostbusters. I like it. I don't love it. Uh, so I was just, you know, this is just a movie that's coming out. It's all right, you know, female Ghostbusters, let's do it. And I hate this movie because it was a bad movie. I love Paul Feig. He's th- he, he was three out of three in my book. His first three movies were great. Ghostbusters is appalling none of them feel like real people and none of them are f- that would be all right if they were funny but none of them are funny everyone's praising kate mckinnon for her role in this she was so bad she was so annoying all she does is make funny faces in the background like oh look at me I- i'm i'm quirky and like ugh, she wasn't funny um melissa mccarthy plays pretty much melissa mccarthy chris and wigs like a I don't know, they're, they're, they're not people, they're just cartoons, they had no chemistry in it. Leslie Jones was the best character, and even she wasn't even that good. The guy who plays the villain, I don't know who it was, but he was awful. The guy has the fucking charisma of a wooden plank. Um, at, at, at one point, they just have him turn into a ghost and possess Chris Hemsworth, so Chris Hemsworth can be the villain, because it's like, he's so bad, they don't want to use him. Hemsworth was the only funny thing in this movie, he had a couple funny lines, but overall, this was a CGI fucking clusterfuck shit fest. It felt like pixels, the end fight, just laser beams going everywhere, and you, you don't care. The effects look so fake. It wasn't funny, and everyone was like, oh, people just didn't like it because they're girls, they're sexist. No. I want strong female characters as much as the next guy. This movie does not feature strong female characters. There are a lot of movies this year that did feature strong female characters, and some of those will be showing up in my best list. But Ghostbusters is a terrible fucking example of being a role model for girls. It's really, really not funny. It's bottom of the barrel stuff. Fuck this movie. Number two worst movie of the year is uh, one of two movies that I gave one out of ten to. Uh, Well, actually, the other one I gave... 0.5 0.5 out of 10 because you know uh, fuck these movies but it's a sequel it's Ride Along 2 Ride Along 2 uh, is the sequel to Ride Along which was one of the worst movies of 2014 uh, directed by Tim Story starring Kevin Hart and Ice Cube uh, 2 uh, uh, Kevin Hart he's like you know he, he I think he becomes a cop in this one I can't remember but like they have to take down a drug who cares about the plot it's generic buddy cop plot oh we have to take down the drug dealer network thing and we have to work together and her <laughs> but the two don't get along so you know hijinks will ensue kevin hart is so fucking annoying in this movie he's like look at me i'm kevin hart i'm loud and i talk fast and i'm an idiot i fall over a lot and then ice cube is just doesn't looks like he doesn't want to be there in this movie he's like has I mean, he's a charismatic dude but he is wooden in this movie he's like oh yeah i don't want to be here fucking yeah, I don't know, I don't even care who else is in it. It's just shit, it's just shit, it's nothing. I watched this movie in the theatre alone, there was no one else in the theatre. I didn't laugh once, I just sat there with a fucking angry look on my face. This is a nothing movie that should not be seen by anyone. It, it, it makes the first movie look good. Now, number one, my number one worst film of the year, it is actually the first 2016 released movie that I saw... And it it stuck around. Props to it. Props to you, Robert De Niro and Zac Efron, for making Dirty Grandpa. Dirty Grandpa, oh my god, you talk about an unfunny movie. 
fuck me dead this was all i will say this movie had one laugh so it had one laugh more than a ride along to i laughed once in this movie um but it's oh it's disgusting it's fucking vulgar and i love me some vulgar movies i mean i loved sausage party you know i like vulgar movies but this movie just has no fucking taste at all and like, not not in a good way. It's like, it's just, they put Robert De Niro on screen and just have him say, have him say vulgar things. And it's like, you know, Jackass did a fucking bad grandpa movie better, you know? Um, Robert De Niro, what are you doing with your career? His character in this is so awful. He's not likable. That's the thing. With these types of characters, yeah, he's, you know, he's a dick to everyone and his family. But he's supposed to be likable. He's not likable. He's just a bad person. Then Zac Efron's the straight man in it. He's not likable either. He's, he's, he's a freaking uptight douche as well. And then it's, you know, of course, they, they go on their road trip and they, you know, get along and they bond and stuff. He fucking falls in love with some chick. And then Aubrey Plaza wants to fuck the grandpa. And then, you know what? She does fuck the grandpa. That's the end scene in the movie. They fucking, it, it, it's really, really creepy and weird. And then there's like an end credit scene where they've gotten married and it's so fucked up. And I don't even know how to describe this movie. Uh, I've tried to block it out of my mind. So I've forgotten a lot of details from it. But but like it, it, it's just it's garbage. It's so bad. It's not funny, and it is an all-time low for Robert De Niro. Fucking dirty grandpa. God damn. So that is my top ten worst movies of the year list. Uh, just another thing. If you want to know my most disappointing film of the year, that was Suicide Squad. I was really really excited for that, and it ended up being a bloated mess. Not quite my worst of the year, but that's my most disappointing. It, it's been a pretty good year for movies. I mean, I tend to shy away from most bad movies, so I didn't see shit like Norm of the North and stuff like that, but, nah, there's there's always a few shit balls. but Dirty Grandpa, man, like, what, 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 what happened, honestly? Um, thank you for watching this video, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it, um, my, there's, there's gonna be a little bit of a wait for my best films of the year list, probably won't be until maybe mid-February, because I like to see everything, I like to see all the Oscar contenders, and a lot of stuff doesn't come out here until like early mid February, like stuff like Moonlight and Manchester by the Sea and Silence, stuff that I really, really need to see and I'm pretty sure will be included in my list, but just doesn't come out here yet. So yeah, that list will be later, but you know, subscribe if you enjoyed this, stick around, that video will be coming soon. And uh, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed seeing me get angry.